by the girls from Glucose Cuisina. I'm Joanne. I'm Jackie. And I'm Kelly. And we're continuing our pasta week and we're going to make something a little bit different. We're trying a mac and cheese with Greek gefi and we call them tiro bukia. And so we're going to start with... It's a play on um, a mac and cheese bite. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be fun. This is kind of a little bit of a two-parter. So the first thing that we're doing is we're starting with our milk and our butter. And I so have, you want to bring that to a boil. Right. And then you're going to have like the, uh, we're using half of your milk in there in the saucepan and the other half is going to be here that you're going to mix with some cornstarch. And, and remember that our rest, this recipe is on our blog. It's on so our blog, yes. You, you guys can all go to Kuklas Cuisina and you will find all of these recipes that we're doing on our YouTube. So what you want to do is you want to keep stirring it until the cornstarch is dissolved. And keep in mind, if you're going to do this ahead, let's say you want it ready, so when that comes to a boil, you pour it in, that cornstarch will settle to the bottom. So you've got to stir it really well before you pour it in to dissolve it again. Okay, and our milk and butter has now come to a boil. You want it, you don't want to keep it too high because you don't want it to burn at the bottom. Keep it at a, like a, a, low, a medium low. Right. So Jackie, is that all dissolved? Feels like it. Feels yep. like it. Thank all you. the way to the corners, get that all up. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna gradually right, stir that in while while mom's cooking. You don't have to stir. You can stop. And just pour it in. Just yeah. And yeah. And you have to keep stirring. Don't stop yeah. stirring. Don't stop stirring because you're gonna get clumps. All the way down to the bottom of the pan and into the corners because you don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan. And it can form clumps too if you don't keep stirring. So Joanna's gonna keep stirring this. While, um, we go move while we're, we're going to talk about what else we have here, because that's going to come to a boil. It's going to thicken in like a couple of minutes. It's really fast. So what we have here is a mixture of cheeses, um, like mac and cheese mixes cheeses together. Which is um, always the best way. You don't want to use just one kind of cheese. Yeah, this gives you a nice variety of flavors that are going to come together in the dish. So what we have here is we have some shredded cassetti cheese. We have some kefalo graviera that's grated and also some feta. So we've combined all of these. Make sure you use a heat proof bowl because what's going to happen here is once that's thickened and ready, that's going to be poured over the cheese and stirred in so the cheeses will melt right into it. That's going to be your custard. That's going to be the base for the pasta. And then we're going to mix it in with the pasta. So that's going to be the next step. That looks like it's almost there. Yeah, it's almost there. Very close. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do, we have the pasta that we're using is called gofto. Uh, it basically looks like a the pasta we use for pasticcio, but it, it's in like half inch uh, right. increments. And I know in Godfathos they use a lot of this. They do. I remember when they I do. was there and there was a lot of this pasta. You know, it's a little harder to find here. It kind of looks like ditalini, but the ditalini is very short. It's very short. It's yeah. very small. Yeah. So you could see maybe from here that this is maybe three times the size of a ditalini. Yeah, yeah. The thing is also, if you um, if you can't find it anywhere, you could probably use ziti and cut cook it, it and cook yeah. it and cut it in half. Right. You want the bites, to, you want these little pieces um, short because what you're going to do is you're going to mix in the cheese mixture and if they're too long, you won't, you won't be able to make the bites the right size. It's going to kind of like be bulky. Yeah, and this is ready. That's ready. Okay, yeah. so here we go. We're going to stir that into the cheese now. And you know what I like to do See how fast that's doing? Well, I hold it up over here and stir it so that they can see how thick it is. So sometimes what I like to do, when, when you're using glass, any kind of a glass, and you're putting something hot into it, if you put something metal in the glass, it'll, it'll draw the heat away so nothing will happen to your glass bowl, even though this is a heat proof bowl. Okay, and so here's what our... So if you stir it, they can see, see how thick it is. Yeah, yeah there you go. You see? Okay. Okay, and so we're gonna that's pour good. that into here. together until all your cheese melts. You want to combine really well. It's going to get nice and thick in here. It's going to get smooth and creamy. Try and get all your lumps out too. In, in, a, in advance you want to have your um, baking pan prepared. Uh, you can use parchment paper, which we were out of. 
<laughs> so we ended up using foil. Make sure you line it because you don't want it to get to stick to your, your pan. Um, and also then you want to spray your foil with olive oil so you're able to pull it off. Same thing with the parchment paper. You want to spray it with olive oil so you can peel it off easily. This will stick to the pan. It will stick to whatever you use, the paper or the foil. Right, so it's sticking sure to you, the bowl right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. You want to make because sure it's that cheese. Yeah. It's cheese. It's, it's cheese. sticky. It's going to stick. Plus you have pasta, yeah, which is like starchy. Cheese. So we're going to start putting our pasta in there. You're gonna have to work quick because that's gonna like thicken up really fast. As it cools, it gets really, really thick. I and told gonna... you this was the wrong bowl for this. <laughs> <laughs> it was the bowl for the cheeses. I don't know why you all are deciding to mix it up in there, but. It's just a little bit more pasta to get in there. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm does not that too one have, sure. Does that one have more room? Because you could kind of like pour it into there. Well, why don't we do that? Maybe there's a little right. more room in there? Okay. Let's see. I'll just be totally wrong. It's like, it's the same. I think it's a little better. Okay, let's So when you guys do this, more cheese in there, pick the like, right size bowl. Mmm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course it's of good. Course. It's Greek. It's Greek. Of course it's good. That should be a new saying. That's what we love to do. Just take things, everyday things, and make them Greek. Once you see all the pasta pieces are coated well, that's when we're going to pour really that into there. there. And when, once you do this, it has to go in the refrigerator. So give yourself some time. You could do this like three days ahead if you want to. But at minimum, you need a couple of hours. Um, it's better to leave it overnight. Yeah. You're gonna cover it with plastic wrap just to keep it from drying out. Um, and then put it in the fridge, and then the next day you're ready to get started on cutting it up. You need it to get firm so you can get it out of here and cut it into squares. Okay. So that takes a little time in the fridge. Yeah, always make sure that you have the right size bowl to mix. That actually worked out. Yeah, this worked out, but you don't yeah, want to lose any of the cheese. Yeah, the other one was a little small. So we did all right. Spread it out evenly. And what do you add to this if, if we want to do a little bit indulgent? Um, add some bacon, some ham, and if you're a seafood person or a pescatarian, you can do shrimp, lobster, crab, like a lobster mac and cheese type of a thing. Many okay. people do that. Okay. okay, so this is what it looks like. We're gonna put it in the fridge until it gets firm. And then we're gonna show you how to cut it up and make it into bites that are gonna get deep fried and get delicious. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're back with our chilled tiro bukia that we prepared earlier. We put it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours so that it could set really nicely. And so now, first thing that we want to do is we want to prepare our breadcrumbs. So for breadcrumbs, we like to make our own. So usually what happens is I take my day old bread or sometimes I buy a loaf of bread and you know, the, nobody ever wants to eat the ends of the loaf, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it always gets thrown out or nobody wants to touch it. But what I do is I take those ends and I leave them out for a few days and let it dry out really nicely. And then I just grate them on my grater or you throw it in a food processor and you let it run and you'll get breadcrumbs just like that. So that's what so it's kind of, it's like homemade panko. Yeah. So we're going to season our breadcrumbs now. So we're going to add some parsley to that. That looks good. Take a little bit more. That's good. Yeah. So okay. chop up some fresh parsley. Okay. Put in, we have some sea salt and some dried oregano. We're going to add a pinch of Aleppo pepper. Just to give it a little bite. A little kick. Maybe two pinches. Okay. So that's our breadcrumbs are now So that's our breadcrumbs. Ready to, it's that simple to make your own homemade herb breadcrumbs a la Greek. Right. And then we're going to scramble our, our egg there. 
and I think we're going to move that over. So now let's let's show you how we're going to invert. Look how easy this is going to come out. So remember, we've we've oiled our foil. Right. We oil the foil. You could use parchment paper too. It works the same for both. But all you have to do now, because you oiled it, it peels right off. It's going to peel right off, and just like that, like almost like a cake. And from there, we're just going to cut this now into bite-sized pieces. So, so they're about an inch squares. One inch squares. So yeah, so we want to get about five rows. Check your oil over there. Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna do it this way. One, two, three. So just kind of plan ahead. How big was our square pan that we used? Like an that eight was by an eight? eight by eight. We did actually half a recipe for this. Yeah. So for, for this particular one, it's going to be, you're going to get 25 squares. So now we want, what we're going to want to do is we're going to dip this first into the egg. Yeah, so I'm going to scramble up an egg. And Jackie, you're going to put it in the breadcrumb. So let's see. So you want to coat it all the way around and then put it right into the breadcrumbs. You want to let the excess drip back into your bowl. You don't want a whole lot of egg on there, just enough to make it stick to the breadcrumbs. Okay, so I'm going to just move that all around to get it nicely coated. And then you'll put it just on a cookie sheet. Look at how nice that is. Okay, yeah. good job. Yeah, that's the way we want to do it. Okay. okay. I like to use my hands. I just find it gets done a lot quicker. Well, good for you. <laughs> and then we're just going to leave them on our cookie sheet until we finish all of these pieces. And then we're going to just start frying them. But it's that easy. Just it's that easy. In. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes with all of our breaded bites. And then we're going to show you what they look like as we're frying them. Okay. Be back in a couple minutes. And we're back yep. to show you, here's our breaded bukya. And Jackie, and Jackie is frying, frying them, them up. over here. So they're cooking beautifully. And here we have our first batch that just came out nice and warm and crisp. Galiorexi. Galiorexi. 